All right, welcome back to my legendary build series. If you haven't seen um, the little synapse clip that I put in uh, my other videos, basically this is a 16 part series where I do uh, 16 different legendary campaign missions, solo flawless. That's all the legendary campaign uh, missions that we have on hand between Witch Queen and Lightfall. Um, I'm using 16 different unique builds with 16 different exotic armors, 16 different exotic weapons, and 32 different legendary weapons, so nothing is used more than once. Um, because we have 15 technically unique subclasses between all five elements and all three classes, there is one duplicate uh, subclass in there, but I'm still pairing that with a different exotic. Um, and that'll be probably the last uh, the last episode in the series. So anyways, uh, for this run, I'm on Dawn, Dawn Blade using uh, Dawn Chorus. And this is just an exotic that I've been having a lot of fun with um, in all kinds of different content. And basically what the exotic helmet does is it gives us nearly double... Um, or at least double the scorch damage that we do. Um, on top of that, when you scorch targets, you get melee energy back. Um, and also, it does enhance your... Um, what's that super called? The one that I never use, where you throw the swords. Anyway, somebody can tell me. I'm sure it'll come to me. Uh, I'm not using that just because Well of Radiance is just uh, a lifesaver in any scenario. Not like even doing this solo as a non support role with a fire team, you know, Well of Radiance, you just can't go wrong. It's a shorter cooldown and uh, Daybreak, that's the super I'm thinking of. Um, Daybreak did get a buff with this, I think it was with this season it got a buff. Um, to scorch damage either this season or last season where your uh, where your projectiles I think deal additional scorch damage or something like that. I honestly haven't experimented with it too much. Um, so this isn't necessarily like a purist type build for where I'm like you know capitalizing on every single aspect of Dawn Chorus. Basically I'm just capitalizing on Dawn Blade. Um, as a subclass and Dawn Chorus was my exotic of choice. I could have easily gone with Starfire Protocol which is the meta basically um, exotic. You know it gives us double fusion grenades and you get fusion grenade energy while dealing empowered weapon damage so you know it's just excellent for doing boss DPS if you have an empowering rift or if you're in a well you're just spamming double fusion nades constantly um, but when you're doing when you're doing uh, solo legendary campaign missions you generally don't need to be focused so much on DPS um, and you do want to have some other options other than standing in a power and rift like healing is uh, plays a really good role when you're doing solo fall stuff now you can combine some of the fragments um, with Starfire Protocol so that you get healing back when you get grenade kills, but um, you know that's not what I'm doing for this run. So I'll talk about Dawn Chorus a little bit. Like I said, it's not like you know this isn't even to say this is the best Dawn Chorus build that you could do, but the essential essentially the principle behind the build is you're dealing more scorch damage. Um, and one thing that's really important to note here is that Scorch Damage is not Scorch Stacks. And I embarrassingly made this uh, false assumption for a couple seasons. Like the last, actually up until this video, um, I've been experimented with Dawn Chorus. And I thought, for whatever reason, I must have misread something, but I thought that Dawn Chorus you know, would just give you more ignitions because you're dealing more scorch. So I equated more scorch to more scorch stacks, right? Um, so, I'm, so I, I like for a whole season I've been, you know, playing with that false assumption, and then 
um, and ended up making it was actually in this run where I was using some different combinations of abilities and, and weapons to do a scorch and I was like why am I not setting off the ignitions technically a firebolt grenade with ember of ashes and dawn core should be enough um, scorch stacks you know to set off an ignition or a fusion grenade should be an instant ignition because a uh, fusion grenade at base is 40 scorch stacks um, even with touch of flame it still deals the same amount of uh, scorch stacks uh, plus 50% from Ember of Ashes, which is the fragment, um, that would be 60 Scorch stacks, and you need 100 Scorch stacks total built up on a single target to set off an ignition. So, and in my mind, I was thinking, okay, well, Dawn Course doubles your Scorch stacks, right? Because it's like 200% extra Scorch damage. Wrong. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't modify your scorch stacks at all it's just doing more damage over time right because the scorch damage is a damage over time you know um, type of damage so that explained why I was having trouble experimenting with uh, Dawn Chorus and Scorch you know for ignitions um, and basically I came to the conclusion that um, I would have done things a little bit different on this run here, knowing what I know now. Uh, didn't really change. I still got the mission done, um, but all I could really say is uh, don't put on Dawn Chorus expecting to set off more ignitions. You basically, you just rely on certain exotic weapons rely on Ember of Ashes and rely on the knowledge you have of, you know, what ability, like, you can combo like a Celestial Fire with a Fusion Grenade for an instant ignition, assuming that one single target can tank that much damage in order to set off the ignition. Um, but, yeah, so, anyway, so that's part of the reason why I'm using Firebolt Grenades here, was because I was thinking that, um, and I'm not using any seasonal artifacts. That's one of the key parts of the series uh, with all 16 builds is that, you know, they'll have some longevity beyond Season of Defiance uh, throughout different variants of seasonal artifact mods that we have. So no seasonal artifact mods at all, which means I don't have the crazy Firebolt setup um, that a lot of people have been running on solar subclasses this season with like uh you know with sun with all with all the solar subclasses all classes um basically the, the seasonal artifact mod i think it increases the scorch damage that firebolts do it gives you double firebolt grenades and they create um fire sprites so Firebolt grenades, if you have those two artifact mods enabled, are very, very good. But I'm not using that here, and I am using Firebolt grenades regardless because I was thinking that Dawn Chorus itself would make up the difference um, and enhance those the Scorch damage on the Firebolts enough to get off more ignitions, which I was wrong. But I ended up staying with... Uh, with the firebolts anyways because it was dealing a lot of scorch damage to uh, a wide radius because with the touch of flame aspect uh your firebolt grenades are have a larger diameter and so you're applying more scorch in a bigger area which means that you theoretically you could set off more ignitions um you know, if you combo that with like incandescent or your celestial fire, or if you're using incinerator snap, I'm just not using incinerator snap because I know it. I, and I know it deals more scorch at base if you hit all five projectiles. I just don't like the way it feels. Um, I like having that kind of like single target precision damage and range that celestial fire has. Um, but Incinerator Snap would be very good to combo with Fire Bolts because they would they would both then cover a very similar radius. Like you can Fire Bolt grenade, pretty big pocket of ads, 
incinerator snap and you'll probably set off an ignition chain um, but like I said I'm not I'm not doing that here if I had to do this run again I wouldn't use fire bolts I would just use fusion grenades and I would just uh, whenever I want to set off an ignition I would just use celestial fire and combo that with a fusion grenade on a big target and there you have it, an instant ignition, because fusion grenades are 40 at base, celestial fire is 60, combo that with ember of ashes and you got a lot of forgiveness there. You can miss a few projectiles on your celestial fire and still set off the ignition. Um, but yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely a science behind all of the scorching and the ignitions and all that, and I haven't fully tested it out. Um, or experimented with it, but it is pretty interesting stuff, <clears throat> and the effects are very cool, um, especially when you're using stuff like Ember of Char and Combustion. You set off an ignition; it spreads. It, it does a uh, it does a larger ignition with Ember of Combustion, and then with Ember of Char, it spreads scorch off the ignition, um, so you can really set off some chains like that. Um, but yeah, so anyway, um, one thing I want to mention in particular, when you're using Dawn Chorus, <clears throat> because you want to be doing Scorch damage for that extra damage over time, and you do do a lot of Scorch damage, like if you, um, you'll notice a few times where front because I have incandescent on fixed odds here right so like I basically one shot red bar adds and the the incandescent explosion spreads scorch and you can just see the numbers are are there it's pretty big numbers for scorch compared to what you would typically get uh, so you can uh, sort of apply a fire and forget uh, style with this build where you just throw a fire bolt and don't even worry about uh, tending to those enemies and making sure they died from the fire bolt or you know switching immediately to a weapon or using other abilities just let the scorch do its thing right so throw your fire bolt somewhere then focus another pocket of ad somewhere else and by the time you're done dealing with that other thing you look back at where you'd thrown the fireball grenade and everything's dead. And maybe there's one or two ads left running around and they're on fire and they're still burning up. Um, so it's very good for that. But I would... Uh, I, I do like to combo the melee and the grenade and just... Because they both deal scorch damage, um, it's, just, it's just a good idea to have very high uptime on both. So if you can get a hundred like tier ten discipline, tier ten strength, whether it's you know, whether it's legit tier ten stats or whether you're using tier seven plus font mods, um, I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't have anything against that. I think it's actually more important than recovery, um, at least for doing you know legendary. Um, Legendary content like this at negative 15 Especially the campaign missions, you know, they say they're negative 15, but It's a lot easier than a negative 15 nightfall um, Or weekly campaign mission doing that solo because those are designed for three three person fire teams So for you to do it solo, it's actually quite a bit harder uh, than the legendary campaign not to mention the fact that there's also champions that you got to deal with. <clears throat> um, so a lot more comes into play with that. But for just legendary content, you don't have to stress out too much. You can just kind of focus on what feels good, what, what you're having fun with, um, and go with that. Now, that's not to say that you can't use this in higher end content like Grandmasters, because you definitely can. I've actually ran Proving Grounds this week. Um, I've done it a minimum of three times on each class, uh, basically because I wanted to fill my Postmaster on all three classes with Ascendant Shards. So I basically have like 40 Ascendant Shards stocked up, and I got about 30 Adept Hunger Juries. <clears throat> 
because um, I was trying to get I was trying to get a good roll on that, which I finally did by my last run, basically, which was pretty bad RNG. Um, but like I said, I was stocking up on other materials, and I was honestly just having a lot of fun. I just stuck to I could have used the node, and I could have done all the other grandmasters and guild my conquer, but I just wanted to do the weekly proving grounds i was just doing it on lfg so every single run was with random people usually nobody's on mic sometimes people are and get a little bit of conversation going uh but for my for my grandmaster uh for my warlock runs on gm i just ran dawn chorus um and you're you're definitely you're not at a disadvantage using dawn chorus because that scorch damage is, is just extra damage and having starfire protocol is great like on in raids and dungeons and when you're doing dps but it's not quite as versatile as you know just playing dawn blade for what it is so I like to run around, I like to Phoenix Dive, uh, it's a short cooldown, get my health back from Phoenix Dive. Oftentimes I'll use Ember of Sinjin so that whenever I do Scorch targets I get class ability energy. And that is one fragment that I would highly recommend here. I don't think I'm actually using it, um, but it is, it is a good fragment to use. And yeah, so for GM... And with GM, mind you, I was using Firebolts, like with the Seasonal Artifact, where you get two of them and they do more Scorch. Along with... Along with, um... Oh, what's, what's the weapon that I'm using right now? Uh, Skyburner's Oath, right? Which, a couple seasons ago, it got... Um, it got a rework so that while you, you, you're hip firing, your hip fire shots, uh, they kind of lob that heavy explosive at, tar at targets. Um, as long as you're hip firing, you're going to do scorch damage with Skyburner's Oath, which is really good. And this is this happens to be a mission where I'm up against Cabal. Skyburner's is a Cabal weapon, and it deals more damage to Cabal in general. It also has essentially built-in anti-barrier or armor piercing rounds against Cabal specifically. So any phalanxes or anything, you know, they're just going to get destroyed by Skyburners, you know, with or without anti-barrier. That's just part of the intrinsic exotic trait. Um, but on Grandmaster, when I was using the Seasonal Artifact, I would basically be able to just throw a firebolt grenade at anything, like an unstoppable champion, and then hit it with about two to three hip fire shots of scorch damage with skyburners and it would set off an ignition so firebolt super quick cooldown you got two of them you throw one you hip fire a couple times you get an ignition to go off the unstoppable is now stunned and you could just melt it um so it worked it worked really well for that i was setting off ignitions left and right uh, but that was primarily because I was using the seasonal artifact. So, um, what else? All I can really say, other than you know having some good uptime on your abilities, like your melee and your grenade, try and combo the build with at least one incandescent weapon, or a weapon that has kind of an exo uh, an intrinsic scorching trait, which would be an exotic weapon like uh, Skyburner's Oath. In this case, Prometheus Lens, the exotic solar trace rifle, insanely good. That's actually originally what I wanted to do this run with, but um, because of this end section here with the sparrow, I wanted to have a blinding grenade on me just in case because I don't have always on time, which is the faster sparrow. Um, and so with the slower sparrows, you actually can get pretty overwhelmed with the ads in the sparrow part and you have to hop off and blind them or deal with them before you continue. Uh, so I didn't really want to run double special because I just didn't feel like managing it 
and ru potentially running out of ammo, which wouldn't have been good. Uh, so I didn't want to do Blinding GL plus Prometheus, and and honestly, I, I because I knew this was a, call, a Cabal mission, I figured this is probably the best, you know, I may as well just use Skyburn itself. It was basically designed for this. Um, but what other exotic weapons could you use? Uh, Promethe so Prometheus Lens, not only... Uh, so it applies Scorch just from dealing sustained damage. And you could basically, with Ember of Ashes, at about three quarters of, of the way through the magazine, if you're on a single target with that beam, they will ignite. That's how much Scorch damage you're going to end up dealing. Um, on top of that, any adds that you kill... Well, anything that you kill with Prometheus Lens is going to do incandescent damage, right? So just like, just like the legendary weapons that we have with incandescent, Prometheus Lens has intrinsic incandescent as well. So super good, super fun to use. I love the the look of of the weapon, especially with the ornament that has kind of that charred, burnt magma look, um, and the sound of the beam uh, and the graphics is just. Probably my favorite solar exotic weapon to use. That uh, that does scorch damage and synergizes well with Solar 3.0. I also really like the the bow that we got with Spire the Watcher, but that doesn't deal any scorch damage, unfortunately. Um, but you can also use Sunshot, the hand cannon. Now that applies scorch just on every hit, just a small amount of scorch. And I think the Solar Explosion also deals a small, a small amount of Scorch. It's not technically classified as incandescent. Uh, it doesn't do that much Scorch damage, but it does just, you know, everything that you touch with Sunshot is going to be Scorched. So that would be a very good weapon to use with the with Dawn Chorus as well. Um, and then there's also um, Polaris Lance, which is more tailored to uh, an incandescent. A specifically an, an ignition build because every fourth or fifth precision hit with Polaris Lance is going to set off an ignition just automatically um, so it's absolutely insane uh, especially on Grandmasters I ran I ran Skyburners on Proving Grounds for a lot of uh, a lot of them and I also ran Polaris Lance a few times and it was just a blast like you, you can just set off like 20 ignitions on an unstoppable you know, or you know probably like 10 ignitions and they're dead but uh, as, if you if you're if you're combining Polaris Lance with Ember of Char so that when you do set off an ignition it spreads scorch you know then yeah you can totally you can totally pair Polaris Lance with Dawn Chorus and have it synergize well um, but it would require you to use Ember of Char because, you know, an ignition is not enhancing your Scorch damage. It's just an ignition. It's just an explosion. That's it. So unless you're spreading Scorch somehow, then you're not really capitalizing on Dawn Chorus. And then as far as... Uh, as far as what else about this build... Honestly, I don't really have a ton to say about it. Um, I, uh, I took a while to post this. I got this footage a few days ago. And I just, the gameplay itself was, yeah, I did it solo. I didn't die. But it wasn't like all that impressive to me and I didn't really have a ton of fun uh, doing the mission. I generally like doing some of the harder content. Uh, with ch uh, with uh, at least with champions everywhere, you know that makes it interesting um, and getting platinum rank and all that. Uh, but until Bungie kind of fixes the balancing issue that they have going on with all the difficulties right now, you know that's kind of the reason why I'm doing this series. Um, so I could talk about a couple of random things here, like. How to build craft, right? I haven't really gone over that. I've kind of covered the specific builds that I've been been using this for this series, but how do you how do you just go about build crafting? Like if you're not experienced with, you know, what do I what's good, what's not, where do I start? There's so much to know. Uh, well, 
they've simplified it this season with the armor mod system that we have, um, or the armor charge system, and basically it's build crafting 2.0, like, uh, previous to the season, like, the way you would set up your build and everything was very, very different. Um, as far as the user, interfa user interface, how you would apply the mods, all that. Uh, it was much more complex, there was way more mods, and arguably there was quite a bit more um, variety and complexity to the builds, where you can kind of get pretty sophisticated with, with, uh, with, with some of your builds. And now it's a lot more simplified. So that is good for people just trying to figure out how to build craft. Um, so how do I how do I go about build crafting? Well, you know, I like to use all three classes. I like to use all the elements and I like to switch it up with different exotics. It's just I like all the different stuff in the game. I would hate to play this game as like, you know, just maining one character with one subclass. You know, I, technically I mostly play on Titan. And I generally prefer Void, but uh, compared to a lot of people, I don't. I really don't have a mate. I wouldn't say. Um, so I, I do have to kind of like, I just, I just get really obsessive about build crafting about all the different stuff that you could do. So I like to play around with different builds and uh, sit down and kind of think about what, I'm, how I'm going to build this out. And then I play with it, and I might just play with it for like, you know, one play session, and then I like to figure out something else. Save the build, pull it out for another time where it might come in handy, like in a raid or a dungeon or with a fire team. Uh, but so the way I go about it is, obviously, you pick your class, you pick your subclass, pick an exotic. You know, you could do either or, like maybe you're just really interested in Dawn Chorus and you really want to mess around with Scorch. Um, so you look at those things first and then I would say like this isn't a, uh, this isn't like a strict plan that I have for build crafting or anything it's just kind of like generally what I do and sometimes it varies but yeah you start with your subclass you start with your exotics and then and then you look at your aspects and your fragments um, and you have to weigh what are the best aspects and fragments to use just in general and then also what are the best to use to synergize with the build that you're going for like with the exotic weapons like I'm using Skyburners I'm using Skyburners Oath which applies Scorch so that complements Dawn Chorus and it complements Scorch so maybe I want to make sure that I have Ember of Ashes as one of my fragments Maybe I want Ember of Char so that I spread Scorch after setting off Ignitions. Uh, maybe I want to use Ember of Singeing so that when I do Scorch targets I get class ability energy back and that means I can heal on demand or put an Empowering Rift down, whatever your preference is. Um, or I get melee, even more melee energy back uh, with that other fragment that when you Scorch targets you get melee energy and Defeating Scorch targets creates Fire Sprites, when, and then you pick up a Fire Sprite and you get more grenade energy. So stuff like that. And then uh, and then you pick what abilities will co complement the build the best and what super. Uh, and then when, you're, when you've kind of got that ironed out, then you go down to the next step, and that's what other weapons do you want to use. Like, you know, aside from the exotic. You know, you need a good balance of weapons to cover different ranges to do different things, and you want it to complement the build. So, fixed odds is an incandescent machine gun, takes care of all adds. Um, and then, and then after that, you can look at your combat mods, because I would say and this is debatable. Combat mods are generally more important than your stats. Um, pick what combat mods are going to instantly give you the things that you need, like. Bomber. If you have two copies of Bomber on your class item um, and you pop your Phoenix Dive or your class ability, you'll get your grenade energy back faster. So, and then focus your stats. Um, but, anyways, I can go on, but that's the end of the video. So, I'll catch you in the next one.